we are still alive. You are sitting in front of me, I'm standing in front of you. Most of us might have tomorrow, Monday to work. Why are we still alive? Not to, just to go, to go to Cambodia, we are alive to serve. Let's not be alive to grow old. Tomorrow, all of us are one day older. Next week, you are one week older. Next month, you are one month older. None of you can tell me I'm getting one day younger. We are all getting one year older. Year after year. Let's not waste our lives. I'm speaking, I'm, I'm not sending the kids out, but I want the kids to listen to this as well. Sometimes kids act like you're going to be kids forever. If you blink of an eye, you will suddenly rise to a teenager and you're an adult. Let us remember that we are alive to serve Jesus. Let's say together, let's serve Jesus together. Come on. Let's serve Jesus together. Let's pray and I'll send the children's church away. Let's pray. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. I pray for every soul here and every soul that's going to the children's church. That we will hear your voice today, Lord, like never before, in the name of Jesus. When your word is spoken, Lord, things that are dead in our lives will become alive. For I pray for every one of us, truly clear you, you know what areas of our lives that are dead. Be it our emotions, be it our sexuality, be it our spirituality, be it our marriage, be it our finance, be it our character, whatever that is dead, may one by one become alive in the name of Jesus as your words be spoken in this room as well as the children's church. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Let's get alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Children's church, you can fall. Thank you, Lord. Be blessed. Teacher and children, be blessed. Get ready to, to receive from the Lord. Man's words can do nothing for you, but God's words can do everything that you need done for your life. Today I'm going to share with you about three types of Christians. I'm not talking about denomination. I'm not talking about what I've just go to. I'm talking about characteristic. Generally, Christians can be put into, we don't like, I don't like to categorize people, but if you analyze, Christians can be put into three boxes. Okay, and, it's, and this is not to put you in a box, but this is to actually help us to be more clear where... Can we show them all together? Or you put them one by one, is it? Oh, no, it's okay. I'm going to talk. I'll give you all together. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, doesn't matter. Then if that's the case, just shut it off here. Shut it off first. Okay, I'm going to show you that we are all in one of these three um, category. And of course, out of the three, there will be one category that is a category that we need to be in. A category which, based on the Word of God, we are called to be in. So please follow me. I'm going to read to you a quote. Have any of you heard of uh, Jim Simbala? Maybe you have read his book. He's a pastor and author. And he actually quoted something that I like quoting as well, now and then, in his book entitled Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. Anybody read the book? Good. Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. And he, he quoted this quote. It's not something that he came up with, but it's an old saying that says this. If you have only the word, listen, huh? if you only have the word, if you only have the Bible in your life, you only study the word, it's the, the saying says, if you have only the word, you will dry up. Everyone say dry up. Dry up. And you don't want to dry up. Okay, dry up means at the end you can't function. You don't want to dry up. So you only have God's word, you dry up. And then the, the, the same continues with this. If you have only the spirit, you blow up. Everyone say blow up. Blow up. Then you live as though you are higher, you are fantasized, you are in heaven. We are not in heaven yet. We are on earth. Can say amen. amen. Get real. Say amen. Okay, if you just have the Holy Spirit, I mean everything super spiritual. I, I call it super spiritual. You blow up. You're not real anymore. You don't care about people's feelings. You don't care about people's needs. Well, let's pray. You are gay. Let's pray. Let's pray. Okay, away. It doesn't work that way. Are you following? So no, that, that's why people are they they blow up because they only have the Holy Spirit, but zero of the Word of God. Then the the, the same age with this. But if you have both, you. 
grow up. Everyone say grow up. Grow up. So don't dry up, don't blow up, but grow up. Tell your friend, we are to grow up. Come on, we are to grow up. So that's a saying, that's something Jim uh, Simbala wrote. It's a famous uh, pastor and author. And uh, I like using that. Um, let me just show you the first, now we can show you the first slide that I prepared. The, the first category of Christians, I like to call them, which you saw earlier. Ah, uh, yes, you can see the first right one. Can you see it from behind? No, they can't, so they, want, they prefer the big one then. Show sure the big one. Okay, up a little bit. I just, you know, uh, cut and paste these pictures. I'm, I, can't, I don't know how to draw a graph on, on, uh, on, on the computer, so I just Google and this is actually, this is the yo-yo Christian. Everyone see the yo-yo Christian? Yo-yo Christian. You know, where you up, you down, you up, you down, you up. If today you are, oh, I love Jesus, I want to serve tomorrow, you are dead, I'm a dead duck. This is the yo-yo Christians and some Christians are in this category. I would call them people who are having a spiritual bipolar disorder. <laughs> you know what's a bipolar disorder? <laughs> bipolar, I'm happy today, tomorrow I'm sad. I'm, 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 I'm ecstatic now, I'm depressed tomorrow. That's bipolar disorder. So some Christians have a spiritual bipolar disorder. Today they are on fire, tomorrow they are in, in the pits. So this is not of God. Say not of God. Not it's not of God. I'm sure about it. There's no way in the Bible that follows this kind of journey. This kind of lifestyle. Today I want to serve God. Tomorrow I want to curse God. That's the yo-yo Christian. Okay? And, and, and no no to that. And this kind of this yo-yo Christian seems to be struggling. Okay? They, because they are not led by the Spirit. Nor they are led by the Word. Just as what I was saying that I, read, I, I shared earlier, they are not led by the Spirit, they are not led by the Word. Are you following? As I share with you, you don't start thinking, oh maybe Michael is like that, maybe Jerry is like that. You ask yourself, am I like that? Are you following? As I share, this sharing is for you to analyze your own life. Okay? okay? So this is not for you to look at your left and your right. But look in the mirror. Oh, my husband's like that. My wife like that. No, no, no. Am I like that? Am I a yo-yo Christian? Last week I loved Jesus. Today I don't care about Jesus. That's the yo-yo Christian. Yesterday I want to repent, but today I'm planning to sin. That's the yo-yo Christian. Up and down. Up and down. The yo-yo Christian obviously doesn't grow up. They can be a Christian for 30, 40 years. You can be a Christian for 30 or 40 years. If this is you, you will never grow up. You will never grow up. You can be in and out of church. You blame the church. You blame the pastor. You blame the congregation. You blame the ministry. You blame the books that you read. You blame everything. But you never grow up. You can be thrown into the best church on planet earth, you will never grow up. Are you following? Because you are a yo-yo Christian. Your dependence is not on the word of God and the spirit of God. Your dependence is on your emotions. Your dependence is on the environment that you are in. You are in Cambodia mission trip, everybody is high, you high. You get back to your own house, you are low, you are low. Your dependence is not on the word of God and the spirit of God. Your dependence is on two things only. It's on your emotions and the environment that you are in. You're very young. You need to grow up. Let's look at the other one. Before we look at the other one, I'll just give you a verse. Or you can show the other one. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 24. Please. I think, I think the cut and paste this name from somewhere but as I plan to pray for the sermon and these are the, the revelations the Lord has given me okay so you can't google and find out about this yo-yo Christian there's no way in the internet okay this is a revelation God gave directly to me so I'm sharing this with you the second category of Christians I will call them the downhill Christian but before we go let's look at the word of God Matthew chapter 24 verse 13 to 14 and the word of God says this But the one who stands firm to the end Everyone say to the end, to the end. 
What are we supposed to do to the aim? Stand firm? Not stand firm just in the beginning. Not stand firm whenever you like to stand firm. But we are to stand firm not just to the end. To the end we are to stand firm. Who can say amen? amen. At the end you will be caught standing firm. Who can say amen? It's no use to be a Christian to the end. But the question at the end point are you still standing firm? So this is a Christian who Mostly when start they go slow, woo, they go all the way up on fire. Zoom, 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 zoom. By the end of their journey, they are down in the pits. They're nowhere. And they are totally not as what we have read in this verse. Let's read that in verse again. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. So you can stand firm right now, but the end not firm. You're not standing firm, you are not saved. You can say amen. Have this in our minds. It's no use to be hot on fire right now, but you have you have no plans. Say I must plan. Say I must plan. We must plan to be standing firm till the end. This is how we plan in our marriage. We plan in our career. We plan in our studies. We plan in a lot of diet, our exercise. We need to plan in the area of our spiritual journey. We need to have this goal. That I was then firm till the end. But as we all know, you don't plan to succeed, you are planning to fail. You can say amen. amen. If you don't plan to succeed, you are actually planning to fail. Are you following? So success is a plan. I mean, I'm getting my master's degree in, in August because I've planned well. I studied for five years and now I'm getting my master's degree. If I didn't plan well financially and educate myself and work really hard, I wouldn't be getting my MA. Are you following? So we have to plan. You want to, if you don't plan to succeed, I'm telling you again, you are planning to fail. So the same thing in your spiritual life. You just don't assume you're going to be successful in your spiritual life. You have to plan. You have to have discipline. Okay? Verse 14 uh, from Matthew 24. We were there earlier. And this gospel of kingdom, if, if this, this, this verse is speaking about the, 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 the verse earlier that says that we have to stand firm to the aim. And that happens, and this gospel of the kingdom of God will be preached. So when we stand firm, now to the end, God's going to use you as a powerful instrument to preach His truth. And that is why we woke up this morning. We didn't wake up this morning to grow one day older for no reason. We didn't wake up this morning to get one day richer. We didn't wake up this morning to get more wrinkles. We woke up this morning so we can stand firm and we can be used by God to bring forth His message to Judea, to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Who can say Amen? amen. Judea means among Christians. Edify others. Samaria means among non-Christians. And the end of the earth means everybody else. Hallelujah. Verse 14. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world. Say whole world. Whole world. Like what Jerry said. Ten years ago, someone prophesied, and now he's being used in Cambodia. You know, and that's how God wants to use us. God wants to send us wherever He wants to send us, and we shall go. Preach in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Amen. Amen. And we talk about this, the end is we are, the end hours. Look at the earthquake, look at the kind of sickness that's happening, look at the crazy world. The world, how crazy the world is becoming. It's a sign. It's a clear sign. It's has been prophesied in God's word. It's the end is not the fight. Don't be scared of the end. If we are ready, the end is a joyful end. Who can say amen? amen. A Christian who's afraid of the end, that means they are insecure. They're not sure what's going to happen to them when the end comes. When the end comes, we will be in a better place. Who can say amen? amen. And that's how it should be. The pastor Mandel mentioned earlier. Did you mention earlier? The end comes. So it's nothing to be for. It's scared the end is coming. Why are you scared? You're not sure? This world, this, the life on this earth is too amazing? No. I think there's nothing. The life on this earth is not, is not amazing. It's nothing compared to the amazing life that the Bible speaks about. I used to say earlier, no goodbyes. No goodbyes, no tears, no pain, no suffering in heaven. Who can say amen? amen. And this is what it means by, and then the end will come. So when preachers by me speak for the end, it's not about we are creating our subject. It's in the word of God. The word of God constantly speaks about the coming of the last days. The end will come. Everyone say the end will come. And the end will come. Yeah, so read it again. But the one who stands firm, not like this guy, the downhill Christian, okay, not like him or her, the one who stands firm till the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in 
the whole world, this person is going to be used by God as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So I call this downhill Christian someone who, who will quickly shoot up in the things of God, but then go down. He falls down with a flop. The downhill Christian is sometimes, some is often caught doing a lot of things. Listen, the downhill Christians, especially in that big period, uh, even maybe going down a little bit, he's often caught doing a lot of things in the church. He's very busy doing a lot of things in the church for the kingdom of God, but he does not grow up. He does not grow up. He is like Mary and Martha, he is like that Martha. He is caught doing a lot of things, but he refused to grow up. And sooner or later, he will go down here. You don't grow up? I will show you the next, the next picture that speaks on how we grow up. It's not just like that, but you will see it's, it's like that. If you don't grow up, you will definitely go down. Are you listening? If you don't grow up, you will definitely go down. You will go downhill. So this is someone who doesn't grow up. Same as the yo-yo Christian. They don't grow up. Okay, let's move to the next slide then. Yes, this looks this is like the, the messiest drawing, but this is the way, this is the Christian life. And I'm going to show you why it's like that. It's not smooth sailing, Ooh, but it's like that, up and down, up and down. But you see, it's adding up. Can you see that? Yes. The real Christian life, and I call this the mountain climbing Christian. The real Christian life is like climbing a mountain. You know, you, we will stop climbing a mountain when we are in heaven. As long as you are on this earth, you are to climb the mountain. Are you listening? And climbing the mountain is never easy. Okay, we've got to be realistic, we've got to be real, we've got to be biblical. But the beautiful part of this is that he aids up, up. Who can say amen? Amen. Okay, and it's, this is Christ's reality. I read to you first. I turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And verses 1 to 3. It's a powerful verse that prepares us, that reminds us to go slow and steady in our journey. It's not just go woo spiritually high, oh, one day up, one day low. But we have to prepare ourselves. Let's just imagine this is a mountain, okay? And we are called to climb a spiritual mountain. So for those of you who are wondering why my life is so challenging sometimes. Let me tell you, Jesus already prophesied your life is going to be challenging. Jesus called it carrying of the cross. Amen. Who can say amen? amen? In heaven, there is no such thing as challenges. There's no need for any of you to carry under the cross. But in on earth, as long as we are not in our coffins, we are to carry our cross. Jesus says, in fact, Jesus says, if you can't carry the cross, don't, you can never be my disciples. You can never climb that mountain. Okay, we are to climb a mountain and climbing when I go to I actually. Uh, did a bit of research how does a person prepare himself to climb a physical mountain I'm going to read to you in a while's time and there's so much that you can apply and learn from those things think of a physical mountain you've got to think of the spiritual mountain so our life on this earth is not, not on, the, on the road but we are climbing a mountain so I deal with people who are sexually broken I tell them you know you don't, you don't go through recovery you are just going round and round the mountain you will never change if you, you get AIDS or until you have some and you or whatever something bad really that happens to you. But recovery is always like climbing a mountain. Why I, I use the mountain as an illustration? Because recovery is never easy. But you gain somewhere. Okay. Same as your spiritual journey. Okay, it's a spiritual journey is not pay sera sera. Whatever will be will be. Pay sera sera. You know song? It's not like that. Some Christians give you that that idea. Especially the grace preachers, that are, you know, some that life is beautiful, there's no problem. Life is amazing as a Christian. No, no, there are, there are crosses to carry. You have to climb that mountain. But the good news is, you are never alone. Someone climbs that mountain with you who can say amen. amen. But are you willing to have him climb with you? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, and the word of God says, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly. Now speaking about people who are spiritually young, okay, ask your friend, are you spiritually young? Ask your friend, are you spiritually young? 
If you are spiritually young, this verse is for you. And then you don't feel bad because you are spiritually young. And spiritually young has nothing to do, has nothing to do with how long you've been a Christian. You could be spiritually young, and yet you've been a Christian for 20 years. But that is actually a nightmare. It's not supposed to be the case. But be real. If you are spiritually young, let's admit it. And let's find out where can I go from here. You could be a Christian for 20 years and still be spiritually young. You'll be a Christian. You could be a Christian for one year, and you can be spiritually really mature. Okay, so it's not about how many years you've been a Christian. Okay, but this verse right now is for the spiritual young. Do not be in denial. Denial is fatal. If you are spiritual young, take, take note of verses like this. Okay, it says this. I read that again. Verse 1. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly. Look at the three, the three words that this verse begins with. Brothers and sisters. Everyone say brothers and sisters. Brothers, brothers and sisters. sisters. That means this verse is speaking to Christians. So there are Christians who are spiritually young. When the Bible says brothers and sisters, it is speaking about Christians. It is speaking to Christians. So the fact is there are many Christians who are young. So these are not talking about non-believers. These are talking about believers. Okay? You are young in the spirit, um, but as people who are still worldly, more mere infants in Christ. Everyone say infants. infants. Spiritually, you are a baby. You could be 16 years old. You could be a Christian for 40 years, but you are a spiritual baby. So what do you do? Verse 2. I gave you milk. Everyone say milk. Milk. There is two kinds of food in the kingdom of God. Spiritual milk and spiritual solid food. Solid food is like rice and meat. That's solid food. But before you go to spiritual solid food, you have to be, you have, you have to need to be in a season of going through consuming spiritual milk. Like baby Asher, Dino's baby. You give him meat. I think he's going to be going to have a lot of problems. He needs milk, isn't it? He needs to go on milk and milk and milk and milk until the right time. But he cannot be forever on milk. If you give, if, if, the, if Dino says, as a father, I decide, I'm going to give Asher milk for 10 years of his life. The father is mad. Because the time comes, he has to be on meat. He has to be on protein. He has to be on other solid food. Okay, let's look at it. Stop looking at Asher. He's not he's preaching. I'm preaching. Look at me. Okay, first, uh, first two. I gave you milk. Listen, he gave you milk because you're an infant. So if you're a spiritual young person, don't try to eat meat. And I'm talking about how long you've been a Christian. If you recognize that I'm spiritually young, don't try to climb that mountain. Stay at the foot of the mountain and drink milk. But if you're not even drinking milk, how are you going to mature? You just stop giving Asha milk. What's going to happen? He will not survive. Isn't it? He will not survive. Same thing now, if you are spiritually young, and you are not drinking milk, or even you're trying to eat meat, you will not survive. And until you start eating meat, Asher can never climb a mountain. But Asher has to drink milk and build his muscles and start going one step to the other step, then he can climb that mountain. Same thing, where are you? Check on your spiritual life. Where are you? Don't, don't fantasize that you are spiritually here when you are actually spiritually here. So if you're spiritually ill, you have to drink milk. Are you drinking your milk every day? Ask your friend beside you, please. Are you drinking your milk every day? No way you can climb the mountain, guys. No way! No way you can go for mission trips. You can give everybody a hell of a time. No way you can serve. No way you can lead. No way you can preach, which you are supposed to. No way you can fast and, 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 and do the things that you need to do. If you are not even drinking your milk. Verse 2. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you will not get ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. So this one, this person I call him, the mountain climbing Christian and his motto is slow and steady wins the race. Amen. But you, some, some people, it's not 
started. So don't, don't, don't talk about slow and steady. They're not. If you are not drinking milk at all, your journey has not even started. So there could be two mistakes for the young person. Either you are not drinking your milk, or you are eating, trying to eat meat. Trying to do the things that you, you try to, try to eat meat means you are trying to climb that mountain. Not yet. You gotta go slow. Take big, big, big pieces. Just melt, melt. Take the bottle and just drink every single day. And Asher has to drink. Look at his size. I think he drinks one day five times. <laughs> or more. And that's how you need to be. We need to be as spiritually as fat as he is. Spiritually. Who can say amen? amen. The fatter you are, the, spiritu the spiritually, the better it is. The greedier you are spiritually, the better it is. Who can say amen? We are greedy for money, we are greedy for food. You take some of us to buffet the, the I think the, the owner of Rookie. But we need to be spiritually greedy. We want the things of God. We need to be spiritually fat. Who can say amen? amen. Hallelujah. But we got to drink your milk. Five times a day. Ten times a day. Not even one time a day. How many, any of you tell me how many times a day does he drink milk? Three times? Eight to ten. Eight to ten. <laughs> you want to be as healthy as him, you need to drink eight to ten times spiritual milk for those of us who are spiritually babies. For those of you who are like this, the bipolar, for those of you who are going downhill, you need to start drinking milk. If you know, and you know, and you know, in your journey you're not growing up, you are spiritually young. Get it? That's the clue. If you are not moving upwards, even though it's challenging, carrying the cross, it's a sign that you are spiritually young. You are going this way, or you are going this way, you are spiritually young. What you need to do? Drink your milk. You can say amen. amen. Hallelujah. This mountain climbing Christian is one who follows the chronological development of a little physical baby. Okay, same thing. Think of a baby. How um, Asher has not started sitting yet. Okay, the first thing Asher is going to do is not wake up and run. Now he's, he's not even turn. So let's put aside all the horizontal movements, turning or lying down. You can do all that. I'm not sure you can turn, probably not, not yet. But the first thing, the first vertical thing that Asher is going to do is sit up. Isn't it? Isn't it? He's going to sit up. And same thing with the spiritual baby. The first thing you need to do is to sit up. You drink your milk, drink your milk, drink your milk, drink your milk. The first thing you do is sit up. And sit up speaks about rest. Everyone say rest. Okay. The Bible says sit down. He sat down. King David sat down. It means King David rested. The Bible says Mary sat down at the feet of Jesus. It means Mary rested. You can say amen. amen. So the first horizontal movement Asher does as a physical baby is the same spiritual movement spiritual babies are to do. You are to sit down, meaning you are to rest. When you start resting more than before, it's just the opposite, right? You start, when you have been resting, drinking milk, rest, and now sit down, rest more. Spend time with Jesus more, then you're going to sit down. After sit down, what do you do? What, what's Asher going to do after that? He's going to stand up, wobbly, holding somewhere, stand up. Then the third thing would be, he will start walking slowly. Asher will start walking slowly. I know, but I, I, I have two kids. And then eventually, I'll steadily. Then eventually, start running. And then, Asher can climb the mountain. And then you can climb your spiritual mountain. Who can say amen? Yeah. You don't want to sit down. You don't want you can't stand properly spiritually. You can't walk. You can't you want to climb the mountain? It's never gonna work. It's never gonna work. You're gonna go like this, and you're gonna go like that. You're never gonna be this way. Getting somewhere. Prophecy is coming to pass. Press being answered. Let there be light. Oh, Mike, there was light. <laughs> Who can say amen? amen. These are signs. People will be drawn to you for counseling. Not just living, living a life like any other person who doesn't know Jesus. A lot of Christians are living their life as non believers. You say, I see some non believers living better life than believers. Why? Not drinking the milk and not moving on to spiritual.
spiritual meat at the right time. Amen. Amen. I can testify the Christian life is exciting. Amen. But why a lot of people find it? My life is so mundane. My life is not going anywhere. I feel like giving up on my journey. You can shut it and join them. Okay. And then um, let's go. The mountain climbing Christians priority is doing the better thing like Mary of Bethany did, which is daily spending time with Jesus through real commun communication. Everyone say two-way communication. Two-way two communication. Okay, so if you are serious about climbing this mountain, please pay attention to what I'm saying. If you are serious about, I want to climb that mountain, and you need to climb that mountain. If your life is going to be bored, if not, you are not heading at the top of that mountain. If you want it to happen, then you need to do, to take this advice I'm giving you, which is biblical. You need to have two-way communication, receptive and expressive skills. Okay, receptive means, if I were to speak to Randy, receptive skills would be, I'm listening to him. And then there will be, real communication does not only have receptive skills. Real communication has receptive and expressive. I listen to Randy, that's receptive, and then comes expressive, I speak to Randy. Same thing. And I believe when Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, there was expressive and receptive. Daily. Everyone say daily. Daily. Daily have expressive and receptive communication with your Jesus. Receptive is reading his word, studying his word, listening to good sermons like this. When I say good means not because I'm a good speaker, good means I'm speaking from the word of God, not just my own ideas. That's a good sermon, who can say amen. You can be the most boring speaker, but if you speak from the word of God, you're a good speaker. Who can say amen? amen. So that's receptive, hearing from God. By reading his word, by listening to good sermons that come from the word of God, and then expressing yourself about what we did now. Just now, when Dino let us, when Dino let us, it was not just praise and worship time, it's not just okay, like everybody, every church has praise and worship, so we also do. No. Praise and worship time is a time when you express your heart to God. So when I have, when I'm in the praise and worship, I put my wife aside, my children aside, my ministry aside, I put my problems aside, I put everything aside and express myself to my Jesus. Who can say amen? amen. And we are to express ourselves every day through praise and worship to prayer like this Tuesday it should be done every day so expressive and receptive skills every single day amen amen, amen. 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 tell your friend please remember to communicate with Jesus every day come on please remember to communicate with Jesus every day every day thank God you and you are all in this church today say hallelujah hallelujah we to receive. Even right now, God, what's happening now? You have having receptive skills. As I share with you through the word of God, you are receiving what God has to say in His word. So this is good. Coming to church is good. What is two hours? I always have people, two hours they come. Go for a private meeting, it's one hour go. Quiet time, just tell me, do it. What is that? Be, be greedy to be with God. Be, I want more. I want more. I want more. More, not enough. Not enough, I want to spend more time with God. Be greedy. Spiritually greedy. Be it. I want more of the word. I want more of the word. Hallelujah. Please turn to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. You will see that we cannot remain a spiritual baby forever. Naturally, Asher will desire solid food. Naturally, because he is eating healthily. So he is going to, the time will come, Dino has to give the baby solid food. Because he has gone through the season of milk. So no such thing as you are a spiritual baby. If you are a spiritual baby for so long, if you have not been drinking milk, something is wrong somewhere. Your spiritual life is this. Down. Your spiritual life is in the right track. The time will come. In your spirit, it's time for more. It's time to lead. It's time, it's not enough 10 minutes a day, quiet time. I need half an hour a day. It's a sign. It's not enough to pray.
pray in understanding. I need to also pray in tongues now. Are you listening? Yes. It's time to be bold and allow the Spirit of God to lead you. The Spirit of God says, speak to that person. You speak. Give that person a word. You give. Fear will just, when you mature, spiritually fear leads you. You are, able, you are still tempted, but you are able to handle your temptation differently. As long as you are on the earth, you will be tempted. Say Amen. amen. Don't dream that you are spiritually mature, then temptation gone. Jesus was super spiritually mature. Who can say Amen? amen. But He was tempted. But did Jesus, did Jesus fall into sin? No. Who can say Amen? amen. So you will always be tempted. But the difference is as you mature, you handle your temptations differently. But you are immature, you temptation comes, zoom, you fall. Temptation comes, you fall. That's a sign also. Because you are not consuming enough. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. You are not ready. But you have a system, God is gracious, but do not be a little as spiritual as sure for the rest of your life. And I speak to Christians, I do not judge, thou shalt not judge, I know. But I speak to a Christian, I know, and I know, and I know if he or she is spiritually mature or spiritually immature. So what do I do when they got to me that revelation? I pray for them. I encourage them, I don't judge them. And in your information, there's a lot of Christians out there who are spiritual babies. I'm sorry to say, a lot of people in this church are spiritual babies. Many. But some are growing, praise the Lord. I saw that in Cambodia, I see that in, 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 in my interactions with some. Praise God more and more. Hallelujah. Let's read that again, please. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Verse 14, but solid food. Everyone say solid food. Solid food. Yes, the time has come, the time will come. Some of you are starting to eat solid food. You know who you are. But solid food is for the mature. Who by constant, everyone say constant. 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 You have to be constant. Once you start solid food, stay. So, for example, I, I still, I eat solid food and also drink milk. Every night my wife makes me a glass of milk. In, in the physical, I drink milk. So both, do it both. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained. So as you are eating solid food, you are also being trained. So there is such thing as training. No training, no mountain climbing. Are you listening? No training. If I want to go for, I, I mean, I don't think I will ever climb a mountain. I don't think so. I, that's not, I'm not the kind of person. But I say I decide to climb a mountain. If I don't train, I will never succeed. You have to train. <coughs> you have to train. The constant youth have trained themselves to distinguish what happens when you continue to eat solid food you constantly eat solid food, you are being trained, what happens to you, you can tell between good and evil. You can tell whether homosexuality is of God or homosexuality is not of God. You can tell whether adultery is of God or it is not of God. Why do ask now? So I get, I've been getting calls like nobody's business this one, two days. Mm. Pastor, so how? So the, now, all of America says it's okay to give marriage. What do you think? I said, ask me what I think. I tell you what the Bible thinks. Yeah. You know? So you could, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need Obama to tell me what's right or what's wrong. Amen. If you are mature in spirit, you know what God is saying. Amen. What is right and what is wrong. Who can say amen? amen. amen. I don't need the boss, the man who pays my salary to tell me what is right, what is wrong. I need to cheat. I need, don't need to cheat to succeed in my business. I'm mature enough to know if you are mature. I don't need to know, oh, I'm too busy to come to church. No, I'm mature enough to know I must come to church. Who can say amen? amen. I don't need to know, oh, can I lie or should I not lie? No, I'm mature enough to know that lying is not of God. So I don't lie. Who can say amen? amen? Of course, if you lie, if you commit a homosexual sin, adultery sin, God still loves you. Who can say amen? Don't misunderstand what does not God doesn't stop loving us. God is crazily in love with Obama and every LGBT who can say amen. amen. And God Jesus died for them as well. I'm not talking about that now, I'm not bringing them down. I love them as well. But I'm trying but my point is when we are mature, we don't need anyone to dictate to us and tell us what's right. We will know. The Bible says clearly here. And many other verses. 
you will be able to distinguish at the end of verse 14, Hebrews 5, 14, you will be able to dis distinguish good from evil. And that's a clear sign of a mature believer. So are you mature? How mature are you? Are you drinking your milk if you are young? Or have you started eating meat? Solid food if you are old enough. The mountain climbing Christian is one who understands that one should not be a spiritual baby forever. One needs to grow up. Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses to not grow up. We need to grow up. When we continue to drink spiritual milk, we will supernaturally at the right time grow up, hence at the right time, we will receive strength to climb that mountain. Mountain climbing Christian recognizes that the Christian journey is heading to the mountain top. We have a goal. You have a goal. Yeah, we have little little goals in life. I had a little goal to get my masters, I had a little goal to have to be a father of one or two kids. I had a little goal. To, but our ultimate goal is to reach that mountain top. Do you have that goal? And that goal is this: Jesus standing at that mountain top. And he looks at you and says, Lucy, good and faithful servant. Ruth, good and faithful servant. All your other goals, all my other goals to make that million dollars, to do it to this, or to become that little famous, to cut that other to write that book, whatever it is, is nothing compared to that goal. And only that goal is on the mountain top. Not the book that is designed to write, not that marriage that is designed to have, not that child that is designed to have, but the goal that stands on the mountain top is Jesus who looks at you and says, Lionel, good and faithful servant. And our eyes are that St. Paul says, fix your eyes at the goal. But you don't climb that mountain, no way you will see that goal. No way. But God promises if we grow. In the Lord, one day at a time, we will reach that mountain. Who can say amen? amen? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. So we are not aimless. For the mountain climber, you are not aimless. You have that goal. Okay? And you go through this two step forward, one step back. And when it happens to you, you don't get discouraged. What's the meaning of that? I've illustrated that many times here. That means you, you climb the mountain, you go two steps. Watch, watch, watch. You go two steps forward and you fall when you say one step back. Then you go two steps forward, one step back. You, one step back means you make a mistake. You fall into sin. But you go progress two steps forward and then one step back. But you are going forward. When you go one step back, you don't get discouraged. You are still climbing that mountain. This is not heaven where you will not make mistakes. When you fall, what do you do? You climb the mountain, you get up. You don't stay on the ground. That's what mountain, mountain climbers fall all the time. They get scratches, they get bleed, but they call you to climb, call you to climb, call you to climb, call you to climb. Jesus out there waiting for you. And the Holy Spirit is walking with you. He is your guide. Professional mountain climbers have a guide, and your Holy Spirit is your guide who can say amen. amen. But do you want this guide to guide you? To meet Jesus is going to flag that right on top. Waiting for you, Sharon. To say to you, Sharon, good and faithful servant. But you don't climb that mountain, no way you're going to see that guy. His name is Jesus. So when you get, when you go through, when I still go through the two step forward, one step back, two step forward, one step back, like a dance, two step forward, one step back. But I know and I know I know I'm going forward. I go back many times. I make mistakes. I hurt the people that I love. I hurt most people. I hurt Jesus. But I'm always going forward. Going forward. Are you going forward? In other words, are you climbing your mountain? Or have you stopped climbing? Or oh, decided not to climb anymore? I want to give up. Hallelujah. You are in this church today. I believe each and every one of us here is the Lord wants to remind us of this. Thank you, Jesus. That's, um, I've usually preached just half of my sermon, but it's time because of the destiny and all that. But it's okay. Leave God to stop making mistakes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's turn quickly to Luke chapter 14, verse 27 to 30. I will, I will stop at 4 30. Shall Don't worry. Luke chapter 14, verse 27 to 30. 
And I'll show you when the Bible speaks about there is there are challenges in this spiritual journey. Okay? Don't let anybody else tell it differently. Oh, there's no challenges, no mountain. No, there's mountain climbing. Luke chapter 14, verse 27 says, And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciples. There will be temptation, there will be heartbreaks, there will be falling down, there will be scraping of the feet, there will be bleeding legs. In this journey, don't be discouraged, press on. Press on. Verse 28. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Plan. Plan. How are you going to climb this mountain? What are you going to do daily? What time of the day are you going to spend time with Jesus? Plan. How are you going to do it? How are you going to train yourself? Verse 29. For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you. Saying, verse 30, this person began to build but wasn't able to finish. We need to plan. Our spiritual journey, our mountain climbing. I'm going to quickly um, close with this. To climb a physical mountain, this, this is about physical mountain, okay, I did a bit of research. There are four things to be done. And as I read to you, I want you to think about, to, to apply it in your spiritual mountain climbing. Okay, the first one is this. First thing we need to do is build strength. Mountain climbing doesn't require power lifting skills, but it does require a fair bit of strength. After all, you are, you are not just transporting your body up the mountain, you are probably hauling a large pack on your back and your body needs to be able to move vertically with extra heavy weight. Body weight training is a great place to begin if you are not, ready, if you are not already fit, including exercise such as push-ups, pull-ups, dips, squats and lunges. Once your body becomes comfortable with the exercises, it's time to add some extra weight via a weight vest or a loaded pack on your back. In addition, getting into the gym for some classic weight training is going to get your body the strength it needs. In other words, you've got to build strength. Amen? Amen. Think about physical climbing, think about spiritual climbing. How can you spiritually climb a mountain without building your spiritual strength? Second, increase stamina. Most of us are not going to a back, back peak, a back, a, what, to back a peak, and what's that, maybe not to understand that phrase, in an hour or two. So to increase your stamina is a huge piece of training for mountain climbing. Being able to keep moving and be alert for hours and hours is a key skill for mountainers. Mountainers means mountain climbers. Any mountain climbing exercise regime including both aerobics and endurance. Basically, the second bit is to build stamina. Say, I must build strength and stamina. Come on. I must build strength and stamina. Thirdly, come on. Altitude training. Altitude means height. Height training. Because as you climb higher, the climate will change. Same thing with spiritual. As you mature spiritually, you experience different climates change. People look at you differently. Your expectation of you differently. The environment change. But you're able to handle it. Okay, the, the, the title of this bit is Altitude Training. Climbing mountain isn't like too, too many other adventure sports, even aside from the risk factors involved. Sure, the fitness requirements are somewhat similar, or that the activities such as strength and stamina, but with mountain climbing, the higher you get, the harder your body has to work. Unfortunately, only the way most of us can increase our efficiency at altitude is to actually train at altitude. Okay, basically, you are training to face different kind of your envir environment. When you climb, when you are climbing a mountain, you are moving to a different environment, different climate all the time, and you'll be able to handle it. And lastly, it says climb, climb, climb. So don't stop climbing. Climb that mountain. And it says this, even with the best physical training preparations, the real test is when the boots meet the rock. And one of the best ways to train is, you guess it, to go climb. Climb often, climb hard, climb smart. Amen? Amen. Let's just pray. <coughs> Father, we just want to praise and thank you, Lord God, for giving us, for teaching us today, Holy Spirit. For teaching us this truth that we are called to be.
be the mountain climbing Christian of God. And there is a mountain for us to climb. There is a cross for us to carry. There is a drinking of the milk that's needed for us, Lord God. And then moving into eating of the solid food. Father, you know each and every one of us and your word today is not to condemn us. Your word for us today is to remind us, to encourage us, to lead us to a better place in our spiritual journey, Lord God. I pray for every man and every woman in this sanctuary and no one be left out in the name of Jesus. Amen. From the oldest to the youngest, Lord God, that each and every one of us will climb our spiritual mountain, Lord God. And as a church, Real Love Ministry, Lord, as a church, we will climb that mountain together, Lord God. Yes, Lord. We will stand together, we will pray for each other, we will encourage each other, we will love each other, Lord God. And we will invite others to join us as we climb this mountain, Lord God. And Father, we know that when we reach at the top, we will, it will not be in vain. We will see King Jesus, and who will acknowledge and declare that we have been good and faithful servants. In Jesus' name. We ask and we pray and all those people say, Amen. Amen. Let's go around. Let's give Jesus a bad offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise to Jesus. Let's go around and share Shalom with God.